from a phenomenological engineering standpoint? Yeah, yeah. I think it involves it involves nanotechnology. It involves what's called quantum wells, which are like two dimensional uh, two dimensional structures, and it involves what's called um, the the uh, fractional quantum Hall effect, uh, in which uh, uh, well, what happens is that the quantum mechanics changes drastically when you compress uh, three dimensions of space to two dimensions of space. How do you do that? Well, you do that. That's what that, that's what nanotechnology nanotechnology does. That, for example, if you have nano wires, that's like a one dimensional space. Right. If you have uh, two little slabs separated by a, a nanometer, or so that's effectively a two dimensional space. The physics inside the slab is like a two dimensional space. And what happens? You get th these very new, uh, uh, strange what's called fractional quantum statistical anion effects. And in which you can get high temperature superconductivity, for example. Mm -hmm. Very, I mean, really high temperature. In, like, in, in, buck, in fuller ring, fuller ring nanotubes. Uh, well, no, I'm not talking about uh, main, nanotubes will play a role, like, you know, the, to you know, to connect. As, as far as but I'm talking about slab. I'm talking about two dimensional, like thin film layers. Nano. Okay. So we're, nano we're talking thickness. purely theoretical at this point. No, it's not theoretical. There's there's experimental stuff, and uh, it's more than theoretical. Uh, and there's a lot of experimental nanotechnology for what are called quantum wells occurring. And you get what's called um, the, the, the fractional quantum Hall effect in which uh, the, electrons, the electrons are moving on a two-dimensional plane, basically. And there's a magnetic field that's perpendicular to the two-dimensional plane. And you get all kinds of exotic, uh, what are called fractional quantum numbers. And it's thought that, that under certain conditions, you can create high temperature superconductivity. I'm talking about really high temperature, like you know, room temperature, room and even temperature. higher, even higher right. room temperature. Right, which would okay. be very applicable to, yeah. to now, propulsion. Now, there's a guy named Giovanni Modenese in Italy uh, who has shown how uh, these high temperature, uh, how superconductors can interact and modify the gravitational field. So that might lead to a kind of anti, a real anti-gravity effect, uh, the interaction of, of superconductors with, uh, with, with gravitation. Uh, uh, leads to new possibilities. Is, is, this, is, this, is this related to, in any way, these spinning superconductor the pot, experiments, the pot pot? Yeah, yeah, now, that, that, that and, subject, that subject came stuff. up. Yes, it, it may be related to a that. A couple other recent papers that just came out about spinning, spinning superconducting disks. Yes, yeah, it's related to uh, that, and that subject was discussed at length at, uh, at, a, at, a, at one of the meetings I attended. Uh, that's a possibility. Also, we have Ray Chow, who was a very well-known uh, physicist from Berkeley, who worked with Charles Towns and discovered the laser. And he uh, has something where he all, has also published pa theoretical papers on the interaction of superconductors in, uh, with uh, gravitational fields, what's called gravimagnetic gravi electromagnetic interaction. Uh, there has been, he's actually tried to do some experiments. I'm not sure if he's gotten them to work, but you know, doing experiments is tricky. But that's a whole. Well, other NASA approach. was working in that, weren't they? Down at. Uh, well, they uh, never really did, but the they day, didn't the, have much whatever money. Whatever became of that. They didn't have enough money. And also, one of the key. The breakthrough, the breakthrough propulsion physics. Uh, yes. You know, yeah, they didn't have much money, and it was mismanaged. Okay, so they were on But uh, we had more money than they did. And we, you know, and, and which so obviously money. this may be done. Th this could be done in the private sector. Yeah. Okay. No. no, no one thing that did come up, and this is very important from a national security political point of view, one of the key scientists in this uh, electrogravitic superconductivity sort of stuff is a Chinese woman named Ning Li, and uh, she has disappeared, allegedly gone back to China. And uh, our intelligence agencies do have very good. Wasn't she working at NASA? She was working at NASA, yeah. Redstone Arsenal, and yeah. you know, but she disappeared for several years. The people at the Pentagon who ha were in touch with her cannot reach her anymore. She is uh, allegedly back in China, and the Chinese, uh, Red Chinese, are putting a lot of money into these exotic projects. Okay, so, so they're taking so, this so, quite and, seriously. Then. Yeah, they're the, Oh yeah, and that's why our intelligence guys are very interested because it looks as though. Uh, the Chinese who you know have uh, own a lot of America now because of the loans and all that you know with the dollar shrinking, that the most likely people to develop the first uh, real anti gravity uh, UFO sort of propulsion technology are the Red Chinese and possibly the Russians. Yeah, what's going on with the Russians? I was just going to ask you that because uh, Shipov and the torsion. Yeah. 
field effects, and 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 we're really we're really. The Russians are moving, and now the Russians. You see, we for a while we were funding the Russians, but now the Russians have their oil. Uh, we're being made into a third world country. Our dollar is sinking. Uh, where you know, is where we're going to become like Mexico, uh, with, Na with NAFTA and, and, and the open borders, all that kind of stuff. So, but the Russians now are oil rich. They got plenty of money, and my good friend. Uh, uh, Gennady Shipoff claims to be making great progress. In fact, he sent me a bunch of video files. I haven't had a chance to, to look at them yet. Uh, we, we'll post them eventually, okay, on, the, on Star Drive. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we'll look at, and they claim to be making great progress in the torsion field work, which I take very seriously because I have my own approach to the torsion, the curvature torsion extensions of Einstein's theories of gravity, and I think uh, they may be on to something. Well, it's interesting. I sent you a link to that paper about the spinning disks, yeah. and, 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 and at, the, at the bottom of the paper, it said that it has something to do with superfluid helium, which you, yeah, yeah. which was a specialty of yours that you right. yeah. got your PhD in, right? Right, right, right. So, um, uh, you know, from a theoretical physical